Right then, in this scene, we're going to take what we've animated here and we're going to batch render that out so we get the high quality render um, rather than just the, the crummy play blast. So we're going to change a few settings first. So we're going to open the render settings uh, window, which is this little fella. He loves to be opened. Uh, we'll go into the Maya software tab first and make sure that you've got the um, edge anti-aliasing turned up. Um, that's important. Also check that you've got your shadows turned on. Um, and ray tracing turned on. Okay, so we've got that. Hopefully, and we need to make sure that we set the preset to something that we're happy with. Intermediate quality is fine, otherwise it's just going to take too long. So that's all absolutely wonderful. And then what we need to do is um, turn motion blur on. Okay, just so that when things are moving it looks a little bit more realistic. So I'll turn that on. We'll leave it as defaults. I don't need to change anything else. Okay, then we're going to go into the common tab where we need to change a few more things. Now, we're going to change the image format. Uh, or you could change it. I'm going to leave it as the Maya if file. Uh, but you can change it to any of these that you see. Now, there is an option to do AVI. If you've got a decent codec that doesn't make it look crummy and doesn't lose color information, then you can use AVI. But it is better practice to create image files. Um, that almost means that if your render fails halfway through, you've still got the first half of the images. Whereas if a video fails halfway through, you've, you've lost that entire time that you've spent on rendering. So we're going to stick to image, for, uh, image files for this for now. Okay, the frame animation extension. What this is going to create then is multiple images. Okay, so what we're going to do is set how we want them to be named. So we want the name, which is going to be room, then the frame number, and then the extension. And that means that you can work with it in other applications such as After Effects. I'm going to leave frame padding at 1. Now this bit's important at the start and end frame. Now for this, I'm going to leave it at 10. And the reason it's important is because I've seen it in the past where people will render thousands of frames and then realise that they've had it set to the wrong camera. It's been rendering the wrong camera and they've wasted all the time. So you always want to start by just doing a preview to make sure it works. Okay, I'm going to change my renderable camera to camera 1. And I'm going to leave my preset at HD 720. That's what I want it to be. Okay, once you've got all that, that's now set up and you can begin your render. So, click on close. And then you're going to begin your batch render. Okay, so to do that, we need to change the rendering, uh, the menu set to rendering. There it is. And then you get a render menu up here. And from there, you get a batch render window. Um, so here, you can tell it to use all available processors. So if you've got, um, or if you're lucky enough to have a PC with lots of processors in, then you can do that. Okay, so I'm just going to click on batch render and close, and this will start rendering those 10 frames. This will take a while. So um, once you've rendered 10 frames, or if you're happy that you've got it right, you've rendered all 250 um, we can do that in the next video, but I'm just going to do 10 and then in the next video I'll show you how you preview that and make sure that you're happy with it and then you can render all 250. So there you go, batch render and close, save it if it asks you to and then the result is rendering with Maya software. When in this box it says it's completed, you're done and then we'll come to that in the next video.